Well, there's VR, there's um, APR3, there's um, kind of like VR on trend view, yeah. Tour. Yeah, I think it is. Um, it's on KuCoin, so it will be there, yeah. Well, yeah. Prime. Yeah, I'd like to chat about Prime as well. I had a reshuffle of this, so it's captured all them anywhere. That's bounced quite well, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Welcome, everyone who's joining. Uh, we're just getting our shit together, and we'll be with everyone in a sec. Yeah, let's just wait for everyone to to get in here. Um, it's interesting how we've had like this proper Bitcoin behavior. Like we 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 made well, I made the false assumption that. Um, ETF, which means that we've obviously got a lot of interest and a lot of capital, but Bitcoin still does what Bitcoin does, and it does these drawdowns. Maybe it's not a 30% or a 35%, but a 17 to 20% is significant enough to have a lot of people literally running for the hills. And I think what's happened is that a lot of people that um, might have had some strong conviction around the bull market started having doubts about it and i think over the last 24 hours people are having a lot of hard conversations with themselves and maybe not even being able to look at themselves in the mirror but you've got to stick to your guns you've got to make up your mind what you're doing how you're doing it and stop letting your emotions get the better of you and i think yeah the last week or so we've really seen this kind of fruit salad of emotions and people kind of losing their minds. And it's really simple from my perspective. We're in a bull market. The trend is strong. The interest is strong. Just zoom out. Really, it's just a way to do it and stop getting sucked in by the bullshit. <laughs> well, there you go for an opening monologue. Um, if you join us, we can get going. Uh, as always, nothing here. hear Today is financial advice. Nothing you hear ever from us is financial advice. Legal, tax, life, health, wellness, sexual advice. Um, go and speak to a trained professional if you want any of that good stuff. Right. So we had this we had the uh, midweek scaries. At this but it we had round number theory play out again. So like three thousand and sixty yeah. K. And it yeah, just seemed I, what... like it was a bit, a little bit obvious. Yeah, Grant did, kind did, of did you like, irrational? <laughs> it was interesting because I, I messaged Grant and I was like, so what do you think? Like, you know, what, what are we going to do here? And, and he was like, it just seems like 60K and 3K are those points. And if that changes and we go below, let's like have a call and kind of like get a perspective on it. And lo and behold, it didn't even hit the 3k or the 60k it was kind of like well let's just freak everyone out and bitcoin does what bitcoin does and yeah i mean this is a proper bounce we were kind of expecting it sooner and um i think we're in a good place now uh people are still a bit uneasy the market does seem a little bit undecided at the moment but i think that's going to change when the us wakes up and starts um i think they're going to buy up i don't think we're going to see a sell off here. That's my feeling, and that's a big statement to make because I always make fun about the burgers selling. I think if you, if we close above this previous, um, this previous resistance, I think the following weeks are going to be very, very, very fun indeed. Mm. Agreed. Because that that is a insane candle. <laughs> that's, that's, like we are not a serious industry we're kind of like that <laughs> well I think the last seven days have proven that we are not a serious industry the things that I've seen <laughs> the amount of money people send to other people a lot of reputations have been wrecked in the last seven days people who have been building reputations for literally years have gone down the toilet because people have decided that 2000 ETH or 1000 ETH was worth stepping away from this industry. It just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, no, you that was it was Sol. It wasn't even ETH, it was Sol. 
I mean Sol rather. Um, pardon me. Yeah. So taking. If I was a leave, I'd be fucking. I'd be running away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there you go, guys. You know Grant's price. So if he ever puts up a pre-sale for 2,000 ETH, you know you're going to get rugged. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just really interesting how, like, a lot of these people spent a lot of time putting in a lot of effort to get their accounts. And they just basically said, I'm going to run. And that's what they did. We haven't even started either. That's a crazy part. People don't believe us, though. I think there's. There, I, I honestly believe um, watching the laugh auction is kind of addictive. It is. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's so interesting how people don't believe that this is like a consistent continuation of what a bull market is. They think like, okay, well, it's different this time around. It's not different. I really don't believe that it's different. It's going to be. There's going to be subtleties. But the result is the same. And the result is going to be parabolic charts. We've said this before. Blow off tops. People losing their minds. Not losing their minds at the possibility of making money. Losing their minds at how much they can actually make. Yeah. So we're going to... Obviously, we've <laughs> a lot of attention and focus has been on a lot of meme coins. Where We will touch upon them. But there's... I think there are... Particularly on that last flush, people are like, yeah, maybe it did get a little bit, a little bit. Uh, we got a little bit ahead of our skis when people started sending ridiculous amounts of money to wallets from people they never met before. But there are a few glimmers of hope for the fundamentalists <laughs> in the audience and across the industry. And um, can I can I start with Prime? Um, yeah. I don't have a position. Just look at the state of that thing. <laughs> So obviously we're looking at the weekly chart here. Um, you know, my go-to on this has been that thread that Ayla wrote a while ago, and he's been banging the drum um, for ages about Prime. I think probably like on that bottom section of four dollars, and and I know that Yamjeet as well, who's written for us, who's a prominent member of the uh, the blockbase community. I mean, he was bullish like at one dollar. You know, he's been accumulating this thing, and he was also like talking about like how awesome these guys were. And some also likes it, yeah. So there's a lot of like the gaming side of things, the gamers or the guys who focus primarily on the game, the game by side of it, that really like Prime. Um, I think the market cap on this thing is still really low. I think it's just above a billion. Um, and we really do, I think there's a lot of upside here. And if we do get, which we will. Okay, so let me rephrase. When we do get a concerted focus or if a huge focus on game fire, which will happen, I reckon this thing could easily do a 5 to 10 bill um, over that period of time. Uh, it's definitely got the right product. It's got a, the right community. And yeah, these guys, they are doing some interesting stuff. I think it, like the latest rally was off some form of AI product or, or some shit. I, I'm really not following it closely. We probably should bring Alo back on and get him to do our research for us. Because <laughs> um, obviously, so I was I was saying this to you for the week, wasn't I? I was like, if if you know people are legit and you can trust yeah. their research to at least form some aspect of a position and then kind of go and do the, the donkey work after that and you've got to find those people you can like really rely on and you know that they're have actually did the work behind it because there's a lot of people that will just jump onto a position because they've heard someone else talk about what halo is like in the weeds with absolutely everything i can't really really trust that guy's opinion so um but yeah it's like child looks great absolutely ripping it makes me feel a bit ill buying into something that looks like that though that's the only issue so when I first called this in Discord, and then I did it again in the LOP, the price basically was between uh, $11.50 and $15, and now it's sitting at $27. And like I said, I honestly think that, and, and by all means, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you go and buy it, but I'm just, and I'm sure it will have a couple of pullbacks. So I think... What's really important about today's discussion for me is, and what I was reflecting on over the last few days is, and I, and I did mention this in a couple of tweets, is like, 
on your watch lists, watch what's bouncing with the most conviction and keep an eye on them. Like it's not like if you want to like go into this market with your eyes wide open, this is how you approach it. And this was one of those that really did give a finger to everything that was going on. This was by far one of the strongest in terms of its consistency and people buying back into it. There were, there were sellers, but those sellers were by far a small, a small amount compared to the, the buyers coming in. It was really cool to see. All right, what have we got next? I know you, well, you're about to do an interview with Victoria VR, <laughs> but that's going to so, get postponed. So, what, so it was postponed. So I, I landed up meeting up with the, with the co-founder, one of the co-founders yesterday. And there's a whole lot of announcements that are coming in from Victoria VR. So for all of you who don't know, Victoria VR is once again another gaming protocol. Um, so this is proper infra. What they're doing is that they're bringing VR, and they're very serious about the VR that they're creating within the context of gaming. So that's, that's nothing new, right? But what's new is obviously that they're doing it on the blockchain. What is the relevance thereof? And people always ask this question, why do we need VR? I mean, why do we need blockchain? You know, we saw Axie, it was just merely a money-making scheme and a Ponzi. The importance of ownership cannot be overstated with regards to games on the blockchain. And this is what the whole relevance of games on the blockchain are. And also the fluidity that, that it creates in developing these things. If you create the right infra, you can get developers coming into your ecosystem and building stuff in a much shorter period of time because the blueprint is there for them to do that. Um, you know, games take years to build. They don't just get built in six months. You know, it takes guys five, six, seven, eight years. You know, I think blockchain facilitates foster building and the right infra. Like, I mean, we saw it with Immutable. We've discussed Immutable before. You know, they're obviously providing a platform for devs. Um, and now these guys are, are, are taking the VR side of things. Same thing with infra. But an interesting little twist that came out of this discussion with uh, VR co-founder yesterday is that they've now incorporated an AI element. He didn't want to elaborate. We postponed the interview, which I'm going to do next week. I think this chart is in a really good place. I've been buying, and I'm going to continue buying at this level. Um, I think this thing is going to, it's poised to fucking send from my, my perspective. So I think it did the same as all a lot of uh gaming and gaming infrastructure um dynamics and emissions by the obviously by the looks of it because current price back to all-time high is at is roughly 2x from here so any bag holders <laughs> bought at the top and expecting it to go back to all-time high um you've got a very very long road to, <laughs> to recovery on price there but yeah just like some quick uh, numbers while you were doing that, like previous mark up all time high 414. We're at 218 now, so probably slightly less than than 100%. So like roughly anywhere around, which is quite interesting that it actually wicked at that level. Um, so yeah, that's like yeah, roughly point like seven cents is probably like uh, around your return to all time high in market cap. But again, like. You never know what these kind of things could do when they're pushing new product and stuff like that. So quite a niche one that I think people are slowly becoming or about to become aware of. So there's a pirate in the house, bro. The pirate has <laughs> arrived. Hey dude. We need good to we see need you. To get him on. Yeah. When are you coming on? When are you coming on Shitcoin Church, Mr. Pirate? Hey home. <laughs> no response. <laughs> <laughs> Back to drinking rum. Yeah. Um, Phantom. So I asked you the question. I asked you the question yesterday. I said, should we actually talk about Phantom? We know that there's been a lot of fuckery that has happened there. Is it a ship that's not even sailed? Has it sunk in the harbor? What do we do? And you're like, damn right, we're going to speak about Phantom. So it's been cooking, dude. People have been making some money on this thing. Apparently the ecosystem's doing stuff. Um, what are your thoughts? I think so. So, from what I can what I can tell, uh, judging by the arguing on the timeline <laughs> between Andre and Jay from uh, Say Network, and it's just perfect timing that they were starting to fight 
on the timeline whilst I just finished recording and we released the it's still early episode with Say <laughs> and Jay from Say. Mm. It's like, oh, fucking great. Um, Andre's calling bullshit on parallel EVMs, saying that they're not the be all and end all, which they aren't. Um, being able to silo specific hotspots on the network away, whether that be if I'm sending you some some shekels or if I'm aping into a shitcoin or if someone else is aping into an NFT mint, like everyone there shouldn't be congesting and fighting over the same hotspot on the network and trying to push and change it. Um, that can be um, executed in a parallel environment, similar to how Solana does it. Andre is saying, yeah, it's not the be all and end all. It probably increases your throughput by X amount. They apparently at the Fa- Phantom is it the Fan- Phantom Foundation. I don't know what they call themselves. It is they the did like a load of yeah. yeah, they did a load of testing and thought it wasn't worth their effort to go and go and actually do it. So they've been working on this Sonic upgrade in the meantime, which apparently just makes the parallel EVM look a little bit stupid. But that's all well and good from what comes out comes from internal. That's that's great. You're obviously gonna do that. Um, I, oh, we're trying to get Andre to come on to the podcast to explain what's going on with the Sonic upgrade because I don't know wait, I don't know too much about it. But Andre will always be back around when there is opportune time to put focus and attention on the Phantom ecosystem, mm-hmm. and this time is no different. So, like last time around, Phantom was like the laggard. L1 trade, Correct. which caught Correct. caught a lot of people by surprise. And if anything, outperformed absolutely everything. Even if Solana mm-hmm. and Avax absolutely ripped and had their day, but from like if you take it from like a a, a unit cost, Phantom, I, I don't even I don't even know what it, what the price was, but like sub cent all the way up to above like what's that candle there, three forty eight. So I wouldn't I wouldn't write them off. Um, obviously, stack team they had a lot, lot of shit. They had like a lot of fallout. Solidly didn't really go down as planned. But since that mechanism has been adopted by Velodrome and Aerodrome, which the optimism and base seem to love throwing loads of money at, so um, don't count it out because they've still they've already got participants that are willing and know that ecosystem and there's products still over there. Despite a few of those projects moving and going over to Optimism. But there's still people there. They've and one of the uh, one of the pieces I want to if I can get a couple hours to myself, I want to kind of write something on and calling it something like uh, the old bull versus the young calf, like that step brothers scene. <laughs> He's like, I've had the old bull, I now I want the young calf. Like comparing existing L ones that have had their ecosystem versus like these this new breed, like you say, as you more nads, you see Zaptos and things like that of the world, and see which could actually stand the test of time and which one's going to outperform. But I wouldn't count, count Phantom out. I just want to check if you can kind of tell by the ecosystem pumps. I know... Where the fuck is it? Can't even find so, what's re- so what's really interesting about Phantom, as you say, is like... like it's What I don't like about Phantom is that there's, there's, there's a bit of a reactionary perspective or reactionary move that's happening right now in that throughout the bear market they were really quiet and then we had the hack um on the bridge and you know a lot of money basically exited this ecosystem and you know they were quite quiet about it that they kind of like were trying to put out fires and and you know they must do what they need to do but they weren't building you know and if they were building they weren't really telling anyone what what it is that they were building and now you know, like you said, you know, now there's opportunity and all of a sudden, you know, Phantom's got a song and a dance. And it's kind of like, well, it's a bit shitty. Listen, there is opportunity here and, and there will be opportunity. Spooky Swap is still one of the coolest and most quirky decks I think I've ever used. And I've really enjoyed it. And they were very, very innovative in terms of, you know, some of the, the ideas that they had around limit trades and, and all that kind of stuff. And obviously the themes that they had were brilliant. Um, so there's a lot of positives out of frac. I mean, from from FTM, but I don't know. I just feel like they're riding this wave now. That is this bull market, and 
I mean, everyone's going to do it to a certain extent, but I almost feel like it's not genuine, you know? Like, come on, guys. Where were you when everyone else was fucking grinding it out? And um, it would be nice to get a perspective from Andre and get him on and ask him that question. Why were you so quiet? Mm -hmm. You could argue it's like, is it a waste of resources that kind of like push stuff when you're shouting into a void in the depths of the biomarker? But um, I don't know. It's doing um, well, dude. That's that's all that it matters. Is, I know that, yeah. It's, and it's, it's up like, it's at like uh, 5x. Yeah. No, it's done well. So. Oh. You're starting to see a lot of talk about Aptos. I actually went over there this week for the first time, tried that out. Picked and? up some. I like it. Like when you use Sui or Aptos and it's totally different. Like the way that you execute transactions is it's definitely uh alien compared to what you're used to on um EVM or even Solana, to be honest. It's it's rapid. Like, like, as soon as you hit to send that transaction, it's done. Like it's, and yeah, given there's not a lot of people over there trying shit out. Don't get me wrong, and that could like, we'll start to see the real test of it when people get over there and build and stuff. But there's a uh, quite a good experience. That Martian wallet's really good. Um, that that actually holds your Sui tokens and your Aptos tokens as well. I think you can plug some more networks into that. But um, some seeds that I planted on Sui. Are, couple of months back of um looking pretty good as well which i'm really happy i you know when you just like write something off in your portfolio and then you log on you're like oh actually that's turned out all right so i've just planted a couple of seeds on aptos so if it ever decides to run then um hopefully we i don't know yeah take myself out for a nice meal or something <laughs> aptos will run i think i think they all will run uh sui say aptos tier they will run. Like, make no mistake about it. They will have their moments. Um, people that have been dunking on these coins over this dip are going to be very surprised because they landed up selling. I bet you people sold into those candles, those weeping sandal, those weeping candles of people who will be crying when these things five, ten x from here. Um, and no, I don't. I don't particularly hold any big positions in these, but. That's what happens, you know. You get these dips, people lose their minds, and then these freaking things just send. Um, it's not a question of if, it's just when. So, say it's been a fucking nightmare hold. Um, it just has. Like, it's just one of those. I think there's 0.55% um, missions each week. Um, let me just see for this really so seven day seven day period 0.55 percent second supply but that supply is towards um finance launch pad ecosystem reserves and foundation i always find it interesting how many different ways you can call the same thing different names but <laughs> um but what's interesting is you haven't had any uh the team or your private sale investor unlocked yet which should be Try and get that date right. What the like 18th of August this year, which might might coincide with the parallel EVM launch. <laughs> Not suggesting anything there. But um no, but I I interviewed Jay from from say this week, and if they deliver on what he says they're gonna deliver on, then it's it's great, it's big. Um they're gonna kind of effectively commoditize or democratize whichever way you want to kind of position it like the parallel EVM. so if you were building an nel2 you could just go and have that execution environment and which is quite an interesting strategic business move if you got the likes of monad coming online and that's obviously one of their main usps and you're one of the competitors and you can commoditize that aspect of the product then interesting take they've also got this shared sequencer layer going on as well where um like app chains or l2s could just plug into that um to that shared sequence layer as well, which I find is quite interesting, but we'll have to see. Um, it's one of these ones where, because it is so choppy and there is opportune 
better opportunity in different markets. I, I think at present, it's one of those ones where I'd be happy to just buy higher when I know there's constant momentum. We have to visit the tier chart of the back of that that conversation. So a question is, did we hit bottom at just above 11? That's the first question. And secondly, do you still think that this thing is going to send? <clears throat> it's a great I wouldn't level, be surprised. That, that bounce be, is yeah. freaking sexy, dude. I wouldn't, yeah, it's, it's just, it's obvious in hindsight, isn't it? But <laughs> um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if around the Eigenlayer launch that these guys push a new product or a new product offering because Eigen yeah, Deer, you, we heard it here first. first. Yeah, we heard it. Just, I, you I, have, I, yeah. I don't know any, I have no information. Like if I did, I'd be buying this thing. <laughs> I, reckon that's, I think I think that's a very good guess, sir. But uh, yeah, I, obviously Eigenlayer, their first actively validated service will be Eigendeer, which is data availability layer, obviously competitor to Celestia. So um, these guys are ninjas at Celestia. They're not going to, they're not just going to kind of roll over just because Eigenlayer have pushed a new product out there. There will be something. I think people got sick and tired of waiting for airdrops that, I mean, the Dime airdrop was pretty good. What's what's Dime doing? Six dollars. Mm. Me. Um, question, question in chat what kind of product do you think is plausible for these guys to launch i don't know maybe some other aspect of the, of the stack it could be a completely different product i don't I, I really don't know i'm just surmising because i can't imagine they're gonna rest on the laurels and just be relatively one-dimensional i know they've got roll-ups as a service as well but there's a million other protocols that are gonna have roll-ups as a service so i'm not entirely sure but if i was them that's what i'd do <laughs> yeah. even if it was announcement of a future product or some shit like that because uh, it it's either gonna get there's either gonna be one uh, what's the best way to phrase this celestia and and Eigenlayer are going to occupy a certain percentage of the market share together. And it's just like, at what percentage of that between the two can you really like occupy? And I think Eigenlayer, when it goes live, obviously, because of everything else that's built on top of, and obviously naturally goes a lot higher than this, because Celestia at this point is effect effectively a one-trick pony, but an Eigenlayer's DA product is, is only one aspect of it. So... I just don't know, but I think there's going to be a lot of. There's probably a good spread trade to be had. It's just you need to just see what comes out of uh, the Celestia campons or leading into that launch. I think because they've got to have a trick up the sleeve leading into that. You just got to if you know that's your main competitor coming online. Yeah, agreed. What else did we have? Um... Let's just quickly do um, APR three, um, just because just because I want to pump my bags, but also just <laughs> kind of proving a point around like, like strength, obviously like what I like about APR three is like, this is essentially a competitor to what chain link are doing. This is proper infra. This is eliminating the middleman in Oracle's completely decentralized notion here. I love what these guys are wanting to do. The, the, the intention behind what these guys want to do is is 100% sound from my perspective. They've had quite a lot of time to kind of test that. I think they, they're they not quite there yet. It's, it's almost like the market right now is choosing to be ignorant around their product. They've been around since the last cycle. They're playing catch up. But what I really like about this chart is that all the levels have been respected for, for one. And secondly... Over the last week or so, we've seen a huge amount of strength um, off the back of the off the back of what it's been doing. What I really, I think, just go to Coin um, to Coin Gecko quickly and just check. I think, I think we are fully accounted for in terms of unlocks and all the rest of it. I just want to make sure. Um, Let me check here first. Yeah. And. Uh... Fully diluted. Yeah, you're not so far. They're off. pretty much done. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's another hundred mil. I mean, it is a lot, but at the same time, I just think medium to long term play. 
So what 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 we've been planning to do in the context of kind of like the meal deal and and all of that is that it's all fine and well that we are discussing, you know, what's what's happening in the present and you know in the crypto space we kind of like. We love that, you know, we love sitting around and just kind of like discussing like what's the next move. And we kind of forget to make plans about, you know, what is going to be my longer term plays and like where is where am I going to make, you know, the the solid steady money, you know, over time. And and I want to just focus on those kind of plays. And this is why we having, you know, in con in the context of the protocols that we're chatting about today is that. API 3, I believe, is one of those. V, uh, Victoria VR is one of those. There's, there's just a bunch of these, say, Sui, all of those are like medium to long-term players. Those are the kind of things that you you build a portfolio up over time. That's what I'm doing. And then essentially what you want to be seeing is that those coins slowly and steadily rising so that you, know, you buy in month one and in month six or seven, you're basically sitting at a 5, 10x. Like that's the strategy with these. And in order to get those, you want essentially something that's worthwhile in the space that's going to do that. I mean, you know, one of the long-term plays, funny enough, is Pepe for me because I think Pepe fulfills that meme role and it has consistency and all the rest of it. Even though it doesn't have the fundamentals, it has got the fund fundamentals in terms of build. There is fundamentals in terms of sentiment. So anyways, just coming back to the more fundamental stuff, APR3 is one of those. I think it's going to do well. Um, and I'm going to keep on talking about it because I think these guys are fucking rock stars. Yeah, that was one of those when you went in for uh, the podcast with them, you came out and you they swooned you. They did. <laughs> I mean, it, and it was all like it wasn't there was zero sales talk. It was like, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. This is how we're going about it. And I was just like, this makes sense. You know, so go watch that. Go watch that interview for anyone who's interested. Um, APR three, they are the real deal in my opinion. And frankly, we need comp we need someone to compete against Chainlink. Chainlink, you know, they just they own the whole fucking space. It's time for other players to come in and do things better, in my opinion. Right. So let's see what we got on. We've got fifteen minutes. This thing's just fucking ripped, doesn't it? You did a paper on this. Tell us what you like about AOs. Um, very. Like, I think if you're going to do something, you might as well go as big as physically possible and make the scope as big as physically possible. Don't waste your time like trying to trying to crack like some tiny little niche that is like a very like small serving product. You're still going to spend the exact same amount of time and same amount of headache and the same amount of stress on doing something small or something big. So you might as well go and do something fucking ridiculous. Um, and this is like shoot for the moon kind of shit. Um, I like that's that's from a like a product perspective. Um, huge crossover between deep in AI. Mm. Um, really good, solid team back in it and then as i was looking into i tend to whenever i get the chance to actually write i tend to like just do like a, a small quick assessment of what the token is doing where the supplies came from what was the initial price are any of the early investors still in like what what can you kind of gather from that and this thing appeared to have launched in like 2021 on some launch pad on, on BSC, I believe. And the, the, um, the IDO price or whatever the fuck it was, wasn't at the time of writing, wasn't far off the price it actually was. Um, and I was just kind of surmising around the fact that if anyone was to have sold, uh, the, <laughs> they'll have done it during this dog shit piece of PA. And you kind of like stuff that's had like a ridiculous, looks like it's kind of dead comes and bounces back and then you start to see a little bit of life in it so and then there were a few wallets that appeared to be quite large still continuing to sell and as soon as that stopped it's just done this um so so i yeah, called this nailed it. so i called this um and i'll take a bit of a victory lap i actually started calling this at around 42 cents it was starting to go it was looking to break out and 
and I've just been consistently chatting about it. And every time I chat about it, it just pushes another level. I love it. It's like being so kind to me. <laughs> unlike, unlike my shitcoin endeavors. Makes you look good. Unlike, <laughs> no, dude, it makes me look but good. Whereas all the shitcoin endeavors, I just seem to find myself underwater immediately and it just never works out. So <laughs> I've got wanted posters in our Telegram chat at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> so two, well, three that I'm thinking of uh so shuffles launched and obviously i think there was quite a sizable airdrop for some people uh i'm not happy with the founder because he completely faded me to come on the podcast <laughs> so <laughs> send it to zero immediately um but if someone can actually have a crypto native gambling product that plays by the book and it's transparent, then I think there's obvious product market fit. Um, I need to have a look at the, I think it's kind of like a wager to earn kind of set up at the minute that they've got going on. I need to have a play around with it and just do a little bit more digging on the token because 34 mil, but then the FTV's 544, like kind of gives me the, gives me the scaries a little bit so i need to have a look at the distribution how that's going to come online when there's unlocks and if it's just effectively going to be an incentive token to get people to to use the platform and that's about it but i'm sure there's more dynamics to it but i've just seen it launched and that's a fdv probably out of the question for me depends how quickly that circulating supply has to catch up to that and what it looks like yeah we're all a bit million dollar buybacks with down down on your price action yeah someone tells why me is that, that thing so why is that thing just a smoldering freaking dumpster bro like seriously it's just the same been old, down the same old same old faces in it like just one of those things it's been a you see the same old same, see the familiar faces and you run a fucking mile they're doing it now on fucking some blast ponzi's but uh, banana, I picked up some of this. Yeah, and so happy. So I faded. Happy I faded this thing originally because I really didn't like the allocation that they'd given to team. And then we had Jerry, who's part of our community, and he's 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 probably one of the biggest bag holders in this. And I actually consider him to really have his finger on the pulse, Jerry C. Um, and and he was the one who essentially convinced me to stop being negative about banana and and i kind of took a view 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 a different view and i changed my mind and it's just been a really interesting process to watch how first of all unibot really did they literally threw gasoline on themselves and lit the match several times just to make sure that they were going to burn themselves which they did I, I just i think in my opinion unibot's probably the greatest fumble in the whole of crypto history and all the years that i've been in this industry which has been quite a long time. I've never seen somebody take have success so firmly in their hands, not just one, but both, and then completely squander it. Um, and then Banana was just basically going, getting on with their business, giving people revenue share, just growing and getting better and better at their product, being faster, being more efficient. And the market's been noticing. And, and it's, it's just insane, like having those initial conversations with Jerry and now looking at it, and he's just been so spot on. And, you know, he deserves to essentially take more than one victory lap. And thanks to him, I got into this. And then once again, with this dip, Banana just didn't break the range for a second, bro. It just maintained it. It was just insane, actually. <laughs> and then we've got Bonkpot as well. Dude, I don't, I don't shop on Solana anymore without Bonkpot. The days are over. I'm done. They're the two standouts for me. Um, yeah. Obviously, I've picked up a bag of um, banana, so I'm obviously biased on that. But yeah, I like it. I really like it. And I think uh, more competitive on chain shit gets. I think this is probably in a very, very good position to do that. And 94 mil, I can I can handle that. Uh, again, Dude, this thing, this thing scary, could but... easily go to multi-billion market cap. Easy. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Bull markets, wait, bro. Wait till the bulls come in here. It's going to be fucking great. Um, 
please, please, can we visit your predictive, your prediction around Jupiter? And I want to actually just quickly unpack it um, because I think it's really important that we get fair value into this whole thing. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are holding Jupiter from the airdrop. And I think a lot of people wrote off Jupiter with a little bit of kind of like gray area and a bit of fuckery around that launch and liquidity and the rest of it. And you said, guys, cool your jets. This thing is going to do a 5x at minimum. And I think it's already done a 2x since then. <coughs> what was the rationale in terms of the evaluation from your perspective that you saw in this thing? So they, they launched with that. They weren't as... They probably thought they were a little bit more forthcoming with the information around the launch than they actually were. And they had like this brick wall of liquidity between 50 cents and 70 cents about remember correctly, which is a way for the team to actually launch the token. And I believe they probably thought, well, if people are able to buy in what looks like a LBP site kind of setup, then it's it's a fair value launch where people can well, they're not gonna get fucked by the regulators effectively. Um so once they lifted that kind of wall of liquidity that whatever USDC was sat in there, then that's theirs. Then it was just like, how quickly can you get me out to be quiet? <laughs> Their founder. And how quickly can we get another main character onto the scene? And then Starknet came around and I was like, right, perfect. Main character has now changed. Let's pick some up. <laughs> so um, he got thrown over to him as opposed to, to as opposed to me out. And, like the fucking volume that goes through this thing every single day is absolutely insane. They're probably going to start alluding to waves because they've only done 25% of the airdrop, remember? So they've, they're they probably going to start alluding to phase two, then phase three, then phase four. So they've got lots of tricks up the sleeve there. They can always just tease their revenue share back to dupe stakers. They've recently just started to put out kind of basic governance forum uh requests so you can go and see how that process works so they're definitely gearing up for something um now the question is if it stays on meme coin doesn't have any revenue share and it's absolutely useless does that allow it to run harder than if it starts to get factored in some weird kind of mid curve p ratio where it's like oh well it makes this amount of money this is the valuation it should be at and I just think it's just it's just going to continue. Like all all volume is coming through Solana at the minute. Like nobody's in the right mind trading on Ethereum at the minute. So I think this and it's just a rising tide lifts all ships with Solana as that continues to kind of close in on Eve's market cap. Then um, you've got to think that this is a, a good bit to that. Obviously, with the additional airdrops that come online, it's going to skew the circulating supply quite a lot. So you're just going to have to assess it at each kind of epoch. That those come out but um yeah it's just great product it's a front page of solana uh, isn't it like that's that's what it is yeah it is that it is the front page of solana so a solid strategy would be to obviously stake get fees and just ride if if, ride, if they flip if they if they flip that on yeah but i think they're probably gonna have to wait until all of the airdrop comes live before they flip that on um but it's just another trick they've got the sleeve. There's no rush. Don't like blow your yeah. load too early and stuff like that. And yeah, I agree. Jito looked like Jito looks like I'm gonna use this USDC chart, even though it's it's got low liquidity because that Jito Jito soul chart's fucking terrible. But it kind of looks like what Jupiter looked like before it went on the run. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They had to actually turn off one of their products the other day though, because. If anyone noticed, a lot of sandwich attacks started happening <laughs> on Solana, and it was just a bit like, what the fuck's going on here? So they actually had have a product which kind of replicated uh, a mempool to um, one of the one of the pro one of the products was like a product that kind of replicated the mempool, but then someone obviously figured out a way to kind of mev that to the tits and people were getting so much attacked and it looks like slan foundation might have just said uh trying to just turning that off because it's not great for <laughs> it's, a, it's not great for our user experience so um so they've turned that off currently but uh there's very 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 smart team and i think they've got uh um you know, they've always got a place in the, in the ecosystem and they'll probably be a blue chip of this ecosystem as long as like solana's a lot around the kicking in my opinion 
just I want to just kind of veer veer to the to the right in this conversation. Someone asked a question around my 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 perspective, or rather my my goal for Pepe to reach a forty bill market cap. I want to just clarify on that. I believe that the lowest that it will get to is thirty bill. I think kind of like a medium would be between forty and fifty. But realistically, if we get the kind of momentum that we've seen in other bull markets, which I think we will, there is absolutely every possibility that we can exceed 60 billion. Where does the rationale come from? It's just purely what we've seen in previous bull markets. I believe that Pepe is one of those narratives that will be underlying throughout this entire bull market. It doesn't matter what other meme coins do. Pepe right now is positioning itself to be the king, and I think it will surpass Dogecoin at some point in this bull run. That is the way that I see it. I think Dogecoin is way too inflationary. There's just way too much overhang on Dogecoin. There are so many big wallets in Dogecoin. I just don't see it doing as much as what Pepe does. Everything is accounted for for Pepe right now. All the fuckery that we saw during the, the bear market has been put out to the wash. We know where all those tokens are. They're all out in the wild. And this thing will do shit. Why? Because primarily it's going to get listed on those major exchanges. As soon as that thing gets listed on Robinhood and you've got full retail attention, people are going to buy that thing and it's just going to go one way. I have been accumulating Pepe. I'm pumping my bags to the max right now. But I think <laughs> the thesis is sound. Um, and I'm going to go with that as being my kind of my my choice for a meme narrative going into the rest of this bull market. Well, that's going to cause meme page sorted by volume. So that's quite a telling story. Um, I think we've only got a minute or two left. Anything quick yeah, for a wrap do. up? Cause we've got, we've got big boys. I think my only, I think my <laughs> only closing statements to everyone is what I started out with. Just stick to your guns, guys. If you feel you got too many memes when you were crying during this dip, you're too meme heavy. You're too shitcoin heavy. Go and find the fundamental players. Stick to the game plan. Get a strong underlying foundation in your portfolios. And use that to buffer against all the other pain that everyone else is experiencing. If you do that, you won't feel like you want to sell. You won't feel like you're going to get caught out. And you can ride out those dips. And then towards the end of the year, you can say, fuck, look at this. I've made a 5, 10x. I'd much rather do 5, 10, 15 Xs than try and catch those 100 Xs and get my ass handed to me. The monkey is still getting a haircut. <laughs> 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 All right. Give us a subscribe and a like. Help us kind of flip those, uh, get those YouTube algorithms running and uh, yeah, go and have a check out the lab. Only it's gonna, they're going to quickly dwindle down. You're going to turn around one day and there's going to be 10 left and then everyone's going to be fighting over them. But thanks very much for anyone who's been it already. And yeah, I suppose we'll see you next time. Apologies. We have to LARP, LARP, the LARP NFT isn't just a picture, guys. There's a lot of stuff coming. A lot of airdrops, a lot of stuff. So go get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it easy. See ya.